Good day and welcome to the Greece Cotton Limited Investor and Analyst Conference Call. From the management we have with us, Mr. Nagesh Basan Halli, Group CEO and MD, and Mr. Dalpat Jain, Group CFO. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nagesh Basan Halli, Group CEO and MD of Greece Cotton Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Hope you can hear me well. I uh, I'm also joined here today, and I'm very glad to report by with Mr. Sanjay Bell, the incoming CEO, new CEO of Greaves Electric Mobility. So welcome to him. Uh, of course, Mr. Dalpat Jain is also on the call. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well and staying safe. I welcome you all to the Greaves Cotton transaction update. We are extremely pleased to announce the strategic partnership with Abdul Latif Jamil. Under this partnership, Abdul Latif Jamil has committed a capital investment of up to 220 million US dollars. In the first tranche, it will invest 150, 150 million for a stake of 35.8%. on fully diluted basis in greaves electric mobility greaves electric mobility has also an option of an additional 70 million us dollars that it can draw down over the next 12 months the deal is subject to customary closing conditions which we expect to close in due time the proceeds from the investments are expected to be used for technology enhancement product expansion scaling the businesses both in indian and global markets while serving our b2b b2c customers in the critical areas that we work on which is two wheeler and three wheeler segments while building the brand ampere which is going to be very important going forward Abdul Latif Jamil, a independent, family-owned, diversified global investor, has presence in over 30 countries, six continents, employs over 11,000 people. It's got worldwide operations in automotive and other areas. They are one of the leading Toyota distributors globally. and have previously invested in global e-mobility companies they are the third largest shareholder in us electric vehicle manufacturer rivian and also have invested in joby aviation an aerospace company which works on cutting edge technology as part of this transaction we have received very encouraging response from various financial and strategic investors over the last several months uh we're grateful for the interest shown however we chose our partner abdul latif jamil because of their previous experience in electric vehicle technology and strengths in automotive we feel they bring in the right balance of the old world automotive plus the new areas of technology i.e. the electric vehicle experience we expect to benefit from their expertise in this sector and help us tap wider international customer base overall the strategic rationale of the deal is very compelling greaves cotton i.e. greaves electric mobility and abdul latif jamil have formed a formidable long term strategic partnership to take us to the next phase of growth we are committed to working towards making clean sustainable affordable mobility solutions which is accessible to a much wider market 
Reeves Electric Mobility is already profitable and post this transaction at the overall level uh, GEM will have 900 crores net of existing debt and this will serve as growth capital to be used for investments as we have elaborated earlier in products and technologies etc. With this, Greaves Electric Mobility has its own capital to fund future growth opportunities. While at the group level, Greaves Cotton's cash reserves will be used to enhance opportunities at the group level as well. We are excited to close this transaction and create value for all of our shareholders. I thank you for taking the time and I look forward to a Q&A session. Over to you. Thank you. Rutuja, we can open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. So we'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equita Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congrats on this uh, no, uh, new deal, basically, and student to uh, MPA. Uh, just uh, firstly, uh, I mean, we, you highlighted about uh, how you're going to use the fund, but uh, can you provide some more color on uh, basically which areas the national will, a major part of the will go into like technology enhancement or or brand building model on just again, just uh, clarify or maybe give more details on that. Yeah, I'll start and maybe the CFO can add. Uh, like we've said, I think the critical part of this is to continue to build the products that our customer wants. So definitely new products and associated technologies, i.e. in some of the areas that will give us a competitive advantage, right, will be one of the area of focus. Scaling up of the business and expansion globally will be the second area of the business, both scaling up India and internationally, right, for both our B2B and B2C customers. Manufacturing capex we continue to increase as we announced in the last time. We are already now at about 20,000 a month type of capacity. We'll continue to monitor that and we'll continue uh, to take our capacity up to the desired 1 million units at Ranifet as and when the market demand picks, picks up and ahead of that demand, we will be ready. Money will go there. Brand building of brand ampere, we recognize that that's an area that's very important as we bring an we want to build an aspirational ampere brand going forward. That will be another critical area. So those will be the four major buckets. Uh, Dalpat, you want to add? Yeah. So Ashutosh, in addition to what Nagesh mentioned, so major part will go into new product development technology. And in, there will also be some part which will go for making inorganic partnership to bring some of the tech capability and enhance the two-wheeler and three-wheeler uh, products that we have. Okay, and uh, we also will look to uh, make some of the outsourced parts in-house. In Is that also be the approach or that will, will not be the case? That's correct, Ashutosh. So as part of the manufacturing capacity enhancement, some of the critical components that we have talked about in the past the capacity will be built in to bring them in-house. But we are not going to go for everything under one roof. Our approach will be building on strategic partnerships with the guys who have better capabilities on the component, component ecosystem. Some of the critical ones, we will bring them in-house in our manufacturing capacity. And uh, see, uh, we mentioned that almost 900 crores is net cash uh, in these electric mobility after this, after the paying of the debt. So that's a substantial amount uh, from if you look at in for one, next one year or two year perspective, considering what we have spent so far 
uh, in this business for last two three years. So will we really need to uh, raise that another seventy million that in the second phase uh, in next one year? Is that a possible uh, or or that that option is open beyond one year as well? So Ashutosh Abdul Latif Jamil is very clear on supporting this business for long term, and as we have seen from their other investments, they are long term partners who want to take business for a longer growth. Right now, what we have talked about is the seventy million, which is an option available. to grid electric mobility and where there is a pre agreed valuation formula beyond that it will be worked basis with fair market valuation at that point in time so from capital point of view you are right considering grid electric mobility is already profitable the capital that is being raised and also the reserve pool that we have will be used for the next phase of expansion and the growth and uh, if there is a requirement beyond one year it will be on the fair market valuation at that point in time and all options will be open at that time on table which will be decided by the board along with the investor in the company and lastly uh, obviously they bring the money on table but apart from that uh, will they also have uh, more like a, a role on the board as well of this a little mobility or what other things that bring on table apart from the money in terms of partnership yeah, i'll take that i'll take that ashish <coughs> right so clearly they yes they will have uh, as a partner they will be present on the board right and um, what they bring obviously is an experienced partner with uh, with diversified experience in geographies and in different sectors right they've been early stage backers of companies like caribbean and others right so they've seen this cycle they have access to technology startups they have a very close association with mit labs right and they are have a long association with toyota motors they have been distributors globally for over 65 years and they have either distribution opportunities or contract manufacturing opportunities present in 30 different countries six different continents that is kind of where the synergies come in uh, because they complement us in some of the other areas non india and they can bring some of this technology enablers country international country access right the knowledge curve of scaling up an ev company so in future if you want to explore overseas opportunities export they could be uh... Uh, helpful over there right yes that's right yeah yeah they have deep uh, expertise globally in about 30 countries okay okay thank you and all the best that also my side thank you the next question is from the line of vimal goel from union asset management please go ahead yeah thank thank thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations to team uh, greens electric on on this deal Uh, so my first question is could you highlight the basis of uh, the valuation on how exactly was this valuation decided in terms of you know the uh, the stake that we have parted uh, uh, have we have did we make any uh, volume assumptions etc profitability if you can give us some detail on that so vimal the entire process was run through a well reputed investment banker and a lot of interest was there as an agish mentioned earlier so the valuation was determined through the competitive process and then when the board decided it took into account the other strategic factors when the offer were and the offer was evaluated the investor did the valuation this is their own character business plan was submitted by the company and as you know company has been having a strong growth in a fight on it it grew by the 97% so that growth the recent profitability all those factors were taken into consideration the right. company the board decided now if you go by the valuation revenue it works out to more than 6 and 1/2 times on the post money valuation of the current round that is 150 million on the trailing revenue Right, right. Uh, 
sir uh, the second question would be uh, while uh, nagesh sir did highlight on on what what exactly does the uh, uh, does the new investor bring in could you be a bit more uh, uh, give us more specifics in terms of technology as to uh, you know what uh, in terms of electric two wheelers what exact, which technology are we actually looking for in uh, from uh, from this investor uh, because uh at this point in time our focus our focus is really on city bikes and uh, will this uh, will this transition help in technology so is there it would be would it be fair to assume that if we are talking of technology from an external investor we are now moving towards more premium scooters or anything anything like that so if you could be more specific in terms of technology aspect i have one more question after that so uh let me just uh, tell you i think the relationship is just a couple of days old right so there are several opportunities and that's what excites us at the end of the day the technology is moving globally at a very fast pace in this industry right i totally agree with you that we are in the two wheeler and by the way we are also into the three wheeler we are we move people and we move cargo right so when you look at technology whether it is in the areas of battery chemistry battery management systems uh, controllers software i think lot of that is being developed globally and evolved way at a very rapid rate access to universities access to startups access to these technologies is kind of what we're looking at that is immaterial of whether it is a four wheeler three wheeler or a two wheeler right and uh, please give us some time as we evolve this partnership i think you will see some of those benefits come out right uh, but uh, uh, clearly a strong uh, focus on technology modes will be one of the key strengths of this partnership and how to differentiate business technology got it got it sir uh, sir one more point, one more question that i had was in terms of uh, 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 you know the pivot that we'll take i think uh, one one area where we have done really well is to sort of be prudent with our capital still grow and then also report uh, uh, and also take a good cognizance of profitability in a very tough environment uh, that is where i think greaves has been pro- uh, has been very very good at especially with uh, with uh, with our electric mobility division uh, with so much of capital now at access uh will the pivot really change will our will our pri- will, will our priorities change significantly to market share as against uh, uh, profitability uh, if at all uh, do we have a market share number in in mind now so i'm i'm glad you asked this question like you said greaves has always been uh, about profitable growth so our mantra of how to grow the business capturing the early mover advantage we were one of the earliest movers right into this sector in india and building on and moving from point to point right that will not change focusing on profitable growth will not change uh, you are absolutely right i think this addition of uh, significant capital gives us gives the team a lot of flexibility when you look at in terms of products technology mna opportunities when you look at brand building and marketing it gives us more but please be assured that the team will be as frugal and that's one of the things that we really like about our partner to we think alike in that aspect so the idea is we are going to be doing more of the same but now with a lot more capital which is going to be deployed in a lot of the other areas like brand building like technology like m and a which we probably were not able to do Uh, would it be fair to say sir that uh, i don't think you'll be taking your eye off your uh, bit, uh, your profitability target yes that that remains unchanged fair enough fair enough sir got your point thank you so much sir i'll fall back in the queue and thank all you. the very best thank you the next question is from the line of chirag shah from edelweiss please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity sir so i have two questions uh, so first question is on on the valuation that has been ascribed uh, is it possible to indicate how uh, yourself and abdul uh, uh, jamil group have viewed uh, your various product offerings be it ampere be low speed two wheelers be it three wheelers 
uh, where they are seeing a potential growth opportunity uh, more. And would it be right to assume that in the overall scheme of things, a large part of valuation has tilted towards Ampere brand and slightly lower to the other brand? That would be the right way of looking at it? So I'll start from a strategic aspect and the CFO can add any financial comments, right? So when you look at it, right, this is a strategic long-term play, right? And then when you look at the investor, they've also always believed in long-term capital, getting in early stage and moving it in terms of, and the significant value creation, right? So that's kind of where the focus is. And when you look at the target opportunities, for sustainable mobility in India and what we call the emerging markets or the global south. There is a lot of opportunities that emerge in this segment, which is all about moving people, moving cargo, which is about B2B and B2C. I think we are one of the few companies that straddles both of this. We are no longer just a two-wheeler brand. We are a two-wheeler plus three-wheeler. The potential is enormous, right? We are at the bottom of the pyramid in India with the e-rickshaw market, which continues to grow. We are in the Ampere two-wheeler, which is obviously the two-wheeler and the significant growth market, and the potential for future growth is significant. Then we're also into the three-wheeler auto segment, right? So when you look at the overall opportunity of moving people and moving cargo, plus like the previous gentleman rightly pointed out, our mindset of not only growing the company, but also growing the company with the right uh, profit or right profitable growth mindset, I think is very important, right? And also the long-term thinking in terms of how to grow this business, the alignment of the vision. I think all of these were very, very important as to how the teams got together and felt this was a very significant combination that could help. And each party complements the other. That's kind of how it was on a strategic rational standpoint. I will uh, ask Dalpa to comment if he has any additional comments. Yeah, so Chiraj, in addition to what Nagesh said, if you look at our overall revenue size, two-wheeler has a higher share today. So in the overall valuation, definitely two-wheeler gets a higher weightage. But at the same time, the partner is equally excited about the three-wheeler and the potential that three-wheelers and the electric three-wheelers, particularly in India and the Global South, the opportunities which exist. So they took all those factors into consideration, and that's how they arrived at their final offer, uh, which were negotiated and then revised. And the second question is also follow-up on the earlier participant's question, is that your, between profitability and volume, you know, volume ramp-up, why you are straddling so straddling so much I mean, so profitability now especially with the kind of uh, cash balance cash that you have generated or uh, you have got because of the deal why not try to uh, move uh, find a find a much better balance between volume because it's an early bird game especially if you have a good product it's an early bird game it helps you to create brand so uh, will there be some thought or some compromise between the two and you will more you will be more moving towards more volumes as compared to the the profitability that you generally had as a focus area Nagesh. yeah you want me to that? yeah so i think the thought process is very very simple at the end of the day are we committed to growing the business as a leader in this field i think the answer is yes are we committed to doing the right way in terms of growing the business with the right uh, uh, level of uh, financial prudence, right, which takes care of our stakeholders? Answer is absolutely yes. So we are not going to leave the opportunity at the table. We are going to go after every opportunity. That's why I said two-wheeler plus three-wheeler, B2B and B2C, bringing in the products from time to time, bringing in newer products, faster introduction to markets, right? All of that will continue to happen. And you're going to see us being aggressive in all of that aspect, right? And uh, with the brand building activities that will happen under Sanjay's leadership, I think you're going to see uh, that aspect also being taken care of, which probably in the past we have uh, not been able to do as much. So, so when you look at all of the above, I think we are 
again, this is a marathon. We are looking at it as a 5 day test match series and not a 2020. And we want to make sure that we are putting in the fundamental blocks of people. We have some of the best talent in the industry. Manufacturing capex, right? uh, engineering technology, partnerships, supply chain, right? All of that, I think, is what we are working on, right? To kind of get to the point where we can get to our logical market share, right? So uh, make no mistake about it. I think the focus will be on growth. The focus will also be on profits. So I think we will try to manage both. So, so if I can ask it slightly the other way, if I have to take a say, two to three year view or a three to four year view, out of the hundred rupee, where would you think your alloc how the allocation would be spread for Greaves uh, mobility business in terms of product development, in terms of brand building, in terms of investing to scale up volumes? So if uh, and any other parameters that you think uh, that of the hundred rupee wallet, if you have. How do you think the allocation would play out for us? It would, uh, if, if you can share some light, it would be helpful. It is because inside on how you think about the business today over next three to five years. Yeah, so Chirag, let me start on this. So like Nagesh mentioned in the opening remarks, and those purposes were also in the order of priority. The largest yeah. part of this wallet will go for new technologies, newer product development, and announcing the current uh, product experience for our customers. The second part will go in increasing the manufacturing capacities, bringing in some of the critical components in-house. And third component, which is part of the subset of the first two, to also get into some of the strategic tie-ups, right? Look at some organic opportunities. So these are going to be the top three buckets, and then followed by the distribution and brand building side to increase the brand awareness of Ampere, Ellie, and other brands that GMPL Group is going to have for future. That's going to be the order in the utilization of capital for the company. Uh, this is really excellent. Thank you, and all the way. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jen from Sri Sampanna Intelligent Assets. Please go ahead. Mr. So Jen, please go ahead with your question. Your line is unmuted. May we request you to unmute yourself if muted from your handset, Mr. Jen? Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, congratulations to the Grief team. So my question is that uh, we have uh, got the investments which was uh, discussed in the previous connects and the uh, company has always guided on the future prospectus. So would like to understand what could be the vision we have for next two, three years on the business model and what kind of new products, uh, product launches we are looking at. Because if I see uh, two-wheeler and three-wheeler is one market and possibly we can also look at market of uh, having products which are uh, to be used within a society, like a, uh, you can say polo, uh, polo cab or something like that. So any uh, new developments on these lines are also available, please let us know. Yeah, so I, uh, thank you. Uh, as you know, over the next three to five years, we have an internal business plan and we are working towards that, which is to build significant leadership in the sector. And like you rightfully said, both in the two-wheeler and three-wheeler, B2B and B2C, I keep on stressing this because I think one of the strengths that we have is to look at application-specific engineered vehicles for B2B applications, right? So you're going to see us focus on both B2B and B2C customer, the retail consumer, right? And when you talk about products, you're going to see us focused on bringing out a couple of new products in terms of the ones that get into the higher speed, higher performance on the two-wheeler side, right, as well as uh, newer designs. Uh, the details, I will announce it as we get closer to it, but rest assured, I think the team is focused on working on new products for the two-wheeler and obviously the electric three-wheeler, right? So those are the areas of focus. And in addition to that, bringing in the right technology and the right quality and the right partners. Uh, supply chain partners globally, right? 
So that's kind of where our focus will be. As we get closer to the product launches, I mean, as you've seen, hopefully over the last three years, we have introduced multiple products at the right time. I think this is an industry that's going to be led by products. And uh, you're going to see us focus more on the products. While I think a fundamental mantra was very clear when we went into this, we said the heart of the market, where the customer is, the belly of the market is that 80, 85,000 rupees, right? So fundamentally, you'll see us, that's where our focus will be. Obviously, to premium models or higher speed and higher version, will there be a little more enhancements in terms of features and products? The answer is going to be yes, it's under investigation. But focusing on truly understanding the Indian consumer, delivering the Indian consumer what they want, and over a period of time getting to global consumers will be the high level vision. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal Gupta from LNT Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning and thanks for taking my question and uh, congratulations on the deal. Uh, just wanted to understand, right, like, I mean, till now your approach has been extremely frugal and uh, it's commendable to what level you've reached uh, taking that approach. So just uh, given this, the quantum of the capital raise and the uh, significant dilution, I mean, like potentially if you die, I, I would guess that if you take the other 70 million as well, uh, you will your share I mean at least uh, Greece cotton shareholding in the subsidiary would sort of come closer to 50 51 uh, percent so just trying to understand that the the just the quantum of the capital raise uh, I mean could you sort of uh, I mean I, I know you've spent uh, you've talked about the areas that where you where you're looking to spend and uh, but uh, I mean like uh, could you just talk about, I mean, why uh, this level of a capital raise? I mean, like. So I'll start. Uh, I think at the end of the day, keep in mind, uh, the opportunity pie. Let me start with the opportunity pie, right? India, even uh, pre-COVID was obviously at 20 million to wheeler market. Post-COVID, obviously, it's gone down significantly, right? But moving people and moving cargo in India is not going to go away, Right. Moving it at the right value proposition at the right TCO, I think is going to be the name of the game. We believe the unit economics are there and the ambition of where this can significantly scale up over the next five years, I think is tremendous. It's, we believe it's an opportunity of a lifetime right here in India. In addition to that, when you look at international markets, especially the ones in uh, like-minded countries, right? In Asia, Africa, Middle East, I think there's a tremendous opportunity there as well. Add to that the B2B opportunities, which, is, which needs application-specific products, right? Which we will, when you look at all of the bow, I think there's a huge opportunity. So our hunger, yeah, thank you very much for recognizing the frugalness, and we believe that's kind of how we wanted to make sure that every single day we are monitoring that, but not also giving up the opportunity on the table. So you're going to find us hungry in terms of watching the marketplace, watching the opportunities, watching the different segmentation, whether it is in the B retail consumer space or it's in the B2B space, in the two-wheeler or in the three-wheeler space, right? We believe there is an opportunity. So our thought process here was, and keep in mind, it's only the 150 at the 35 person state, right? That's kind of what is diluted right now, just to clarify your question, right? Our intent right now is to use this as growth capital and focus it on areas, build significant technology modes in terms of what could be a huge differentiator over a period of time. I think so that's kind of where we are and that is where you're going to see us, our focus over the next 24 to 36 months. And the idea is to do it once, like Dalpat was saying, we ran a process Global investors looked at it, right? It was both financial strategic. We went through uh, almost like a over six months process. And the intent now is to do it once, to get the money, get that uh, quote-unquote war chest ready, and now focus on the consumer, focus on the markets, focus on the business, and allow our teams 
to give them the flexibility to succeed, go out and win. And we believe that this could be a great opportunity. Hence the reason for the type of country. And Sonal, I would like to add two more points to what Nagesh mentioned. One, this $150 million are identified as the total business plan requirement. $70 million is the reserve pool available at the option of GNPL. There is no obligation. And the valuation parameters for that are determined taking post-money valuation of the current round as the pre-money valuation of the next whenever if that money is called by GNPL and is required by them with the adjustments for time value of money and the business cost. So to that extent, the valuation that you indicated would not be the case. At any point in time, GMP or GCL will remain with significant control of uh, GMP. Got it. And and uh, I mean, I, to be, I, I do understand that the, given that the opportunity and uh, the, uh, and like you mentioned, the size of the opportunity and clearly the business is at an inflection point. So this is coming in just at the right time. So do we see in that sense that uh, your plans were are already in place and we will see a significant step up in execution over the next uh, six, uh, 12 months to 18 months? Is that the way to look at it? Yes, I think so too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's the whole idea, Sonal, where step by step company has what is that uh, we have been talking or we have executed. So be it beating up the leadership team, beating up the teams at the GMP level, bringing the business to a particular size, level of profitability, and now getting the right partner with the right and capital resources for the company so that it can expedite and accelerate the execution plan on what we have looked as a vision for this particular company. Got it. Got it. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan NL from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Congratulations to the team. Uh, two questions. Uh, firstly, company is stepping up investments on new products and the E two wheeler, three wheeler penetration industry estimates are aggressive as stated in your presentation. How do you expect the demand to pan out for uh, fixed swappable technologies, B2B private segment, low speed, high speed categories? In which technologies or product segments uh, would you uh, target uh, more of investments? So clearly, uh, the demand is there. When you look at the retail, let me take it one by one, two-wheeler and three-wheeler, right? The retail consumer, especially on the two-wheeler side, I think because of the unit economics I touched upon before, I think, and the petrol price is going up, I think clearly the delta or the differential is more attractive, and clearly we see the demand, right? So in terms of uh, opportunities in the retail consumer, yes. When you look at on the B2B side, when you look at ride sharing, uh, uh, cargo delivery, the big basket type of companies, the Amazon type of companies, there's a lot of opportunity there, right? So when I look at it, I think the demand is uh, strong and we continue to see strong demand. We continue to see a lot of strong interest at the dealership level, right? One caveat, our supply chain continues to be a challenge globally. This is not, not just for us. So in fact, if there is one area we are watching very carefully and building deeper relationship with suppliers, going global, making sure that we are talking to the chip makers globally, right? Those are the things that you're going to see us do more as well, right? So that's kind of where I see, I see demand continuing to grow in the area of two-wheeler, three-wheeler, B2B, B2C, and uh, in India first, and then I also see good opportunities in certain parts of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my second question, uh, how are you looking at the competition scenario, uh, considering a few of the peers have PLI benefits? Would that put them at an advantage over others? How would you try and differentiate from larger peers? Well, I, I personally would not like to comment on competition, but one thing to know is 
whenever there is, we are probably in the middle of the deepest, longest technology disruption that mankind has ever seen. The mobility as we know it will change. The very fact that uh, companies old and new are coming together, moving more towards more technology, more connected, more data. I think you're going to see a confluence of events that happen from a technology and from data distribution models are going to change, business models are going to change. Some of this, we were fortunate enough, we've been trying them out. Keep in mind, Ampere is a 13-year-old company, right? We've been at it for the last four years and we continue to learn. So we believe, and you can take examples world over, whether it is in the West or even in China, and look at kind of the, how the competition was and how the competition evolved in the tubular electric industry. You can do your own homework and you can see. So opportunities like this are an opportunity of a lifetime because the, it's an opportunity for new people to be sitting at the table, irrespective of size, irrespective of reach. It's the vision, it's the technology, it's the products, it's understanding of the consumer that matters. And I think that's kind of what we are going to be focused on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, wishing you all the best. One last question. Uh, uh, over the medium to long term, how would you see your aspirational uh, market share in two-wheeler and three-wheeler? That's all from my side. So clearly, uh, like I said before, we're going to be hungry. We see the opportunity. As the opportunity evolves, we have a significant internal goal. At the right time, we'll come back and talk about it. But one way, and uh, with our teams, both with Sanjay coming in and uh, absolutely with the partner now coming in, we will be looking at uh, our business plan over the next 90 to 180 days. So I will probably address that maybe in 180 days. But enough to say that I think we saw this opportunity earlier. We have moved faster. We have done what it takes, and we'll continue, you'll continue to see that. So just watch our actions in the last 36 months, and then you will probably get an answer for the next 36 months. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jyoti Singh from Ari and Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Jyoti Singh, please go ahead with your question. Your line is unmuted. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, but my question already been answered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ronak Sarda from Systematics. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks and congratulations uh, on, on this deal. Uh, a, a few questions. Uh, one, uh, you alluded to the supply chain constraint. Uh, so uh, first, uh, can you help us uh, understand uh, uh, how does this tie up help us on uh, on the battery supply, uh, the quality of cells, and also what are the changes expected uh, uh, post the recent you know fire fire issues uh, on the overall electric two wheelers? So uh, a mixed question, but one, what are the changes, and second, how does this tie up help us uh, close uh, on the battery supply especially? Yeah, so I think our technology team led by our global CTO, I think will con continues to focus on what's right, uh, focusing not just on the cell quality, which is obviously one of the key things, like you rightfully said, plus the battery pack design, plus the PMS, and a host of other things, right? So I think the uh, Ampere has been around for 13 plus years, and the goal is obviously to keep working with India duty cycle conditions and making sure that we have a product, right? So I think you're going to see continued focus on technology and safety, which is paramount importance to us. Coming to the supply chain, clearly our supply chain team, and this is where we have brought in strengths from the Greek side. So clearly while Ampere is a startup, we have brought in key strengths on supply chain and manufacturing, scaling up from the Greek side, where Greece was good at. And our teams are working with strategic partners, uh, supplier partners, and like Dalpat said earlier, we always look at both make and buy. 
and as the volumes increases some of that will evolve but we have strategic partners and in some cases even though as we all know lithium cells and chips come from outside the battery pack design and the battery packs come from India right so the our teams are in touch with our partners both here and in some cases working with the original source wherever that original source is to ensure that we uh, get not only the quantity but also the right quality looking ahead one to two quarters ahead right so I think that's kind of will be the focus of a very experienced supply chain team that we have and over a period of time we'll continue to do that and uh, and also evaluate what is right uh, right to be done along with the partner what is right to be done internal from a scaling up or from a quality perspective so all of that introspection keeps happening from time to time and I think you're going to continue to see that um, okay sure uh, the second question was you know I mean um, looking at the medium term how do you uh, given there are very few electric to pure, uh, pure electric two wheelers uh, you know uh, uh, not burning you know uh, cash so how do you see the scenario changing let's say once the fame to subsidy uh, ends I mean uh, what are the scenarios are we working with uh, does the subsidy go away entirely given PLI uh, you know scheme so comes into play uh, and if that happens how does the industry change do you see a significant uh, volume pressure uh, due to that or do you see uh, or is there any other scenario which can you know indicate uh, So you are, I think you are talking about post subsidy regime, yeah. So yeah, clearly, the fame uh, yeah, proper fame, yeah, understood. So clearly, the fame too. We all know uh, up to what time the government uh, uh, has allowed that, right? I mean, it's it's kind of clear. But our goal is always to be looking at our designs, our technology, looking at uh, uh, kind of how we can make it more efficient from a frugalness, right, in terms of. Uh, optimizing cost, I would say, or uh, we have an internal program for Propel, right? That's one. Parallelly, scale helps in automotive. So as the number of units improve, obviously the scale efficiencies kick in, right? And that is another area. And thirdly, as you've pr probably seen, we are not uh, averse to taking price increases as and when the uh, need arises. Our average ASP, you can look at it, has grown significantly over the last uh, year and a half, right? Average selling price. So we will do look at all of the th three options I just described, right? All right? And uh, keep watching the bottom line, as well as keep looking at market share and looking at the volume. So I think with this is where focus on technology, focus on products, focus on a strategic supplier system that are strategic to us is very very important so building the long term what I call technology and supply chain modes I think will be critical so that's kind of what we are working towards to get ourselves ready as and when that need arises sure and a final question I mean given the quantum of KPA, uh, the capital raise uh, are there plans to enter the four-wheeler uh, space as well, whether it's on the commercial side or on the passenger vehicle side? Uh, no plans as of now. Sure. Okay. So the, the funding is dedicated to the electric two and three-wheeler. Two and three-wheeler, yes. Okay. Sure. Thank you and all the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pramod Amte from Ingrid Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, congrats for the fund raise. Two questions. First one is, uh, what's the exit plan for the new investor and what's the timeline you guys have signed as part of the deal? So Pramod, uh, some of the details are confidential and we are bound by the confidentiality under the agreement. Having said that, from the overall investment deal perspective, it is an equity deal and both the investors uh, basically, investors are going to carry the pure equity risk in this particular part. There are customary processes of exit, which will be done on the best effort basis. But uh, if you are pushing it, there are no specific obligations taken by either the company or the promoter. Sure. 
Second one is with regard to the uh, the way the structuring of the deal is, uh, and the questions are surrounded with the extent of dilution. Uh, so if I had to ask you, uh, usually the industry phenomena in these startups is people go through uh, different series of funding to discover the valuation. Uh, whereas in your case, it looks like uh, you have taken uh, one big jump into it. Uh, wanted to know what's the thought process, why not to discover the value as you go forward, one. Because as you clearly alluded, it's a more test match and uh, there will be more positive negative surprise which may come in. Uh, that's one. Second, uh, considering the you are one of the relatively amongst the startups have been well funded uh, with the support of the parent and the way the products are performing. Was there a need to go for uh, this big jump was also with the fact that you expect some shakeout to happen, might be 12 months, 18 months down the line in the industry and hence you want to be fully uh, prepared for it. Elaborated on it earlier. On the last part, we are not a startup as a group. The company, Real Cotton, has been there, and uh, as a company, we have always been focused on profitability and making sure that business runs as per what it is required. From capital raise point of view, as you know, the opportunity is very big, be it in the two wheelers and the three wheelers. We wanted to go for one, have the required resources so that the management can continue to focus on business and driving the growth that we have found. Sure. Thanks a lot, Thank you. The next question is from the line of Faisal Hava from SG Hava and Company. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, can you, uh, so uh, sir, uh, with Ola and even Acer, you know, really leading the charge and, you know, we have uh, kind of, you know, captured the imagination as startups amongst the buying uh, population or public. Uh, so we still, you know, the image of our, uh, you know, scooter as well as the corporate is of, you know, like an old world company. And, you know, so we have uh, lost some kind of a discourse uh, there itself. How, how do you want to, you know, correct that? And secondly, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the private equity investor uh, that you have got on board has also invested uh, in Rivian, which is more into truck manufacturing. So uh, we feel that uh, it could also lead to more synergies there. And, you know, we get into that um, where also there is a huge uh, use case uh, uh, argument for it also. So uh, I think there were a couple of questions there. I'll start. Uh, uh, first of all, I think we have a strategic investor, not a private equity, right? Uh, so uh, Abdul Latif Jamil is going to be a very strategic long-term investor, right? And then the second thing is, uh, I'm so uh, I don't want to talk about competition, but at the end of the day, you have seen a performance. I think uh, 21 versus 22, the performance uh, of volume went from. 129%, I believe it was 27,000 to 62,000, right? Uh, quarterly uh, results, 237 crores, and positive PBT and positive EBITDA. So if it is this, uh, we are not in the business of likes. We are not in the business of, we are in the business of adding significant shareholder value and taking care of our customers. And I think that will be our focus by doing the product right, the technology right, and getting, uh, the customer what the customer wants. You no, know, sir, sir, I was not talking more in terms of number. I was talking in terms of the branding. Because, yes. Yeah. I am totally, I am totally with you that on numbers there can be hardly any company in electric vehicles, which is electric scooter, at least you know, which is better than us. So you know, the branding itself, you know, is a little, you know, uh, I mean, old world or you know, something like that, you know, which is very, uh, it's a very soggy branding. Okay, uh, I was going to come to the branding. Thanks for that. I was going to come to the branding next. As I said earlier on, one of the areas where the money is going to be used is to build brand ampere. We clearly want to build an aspirational brand ampere, right? And uh, the uh, early indicators you saw, uh, and if you've not seen that, I would welcome you to see our ampere experience center, right? Some of our new dealerships that are coming on, where we are headed. And... Uh, the reason for bringing in Sanjay, who's got a significant experience in this, is exactly also in, in this area, in terms of the branding, in terms of digitization data, right? So you're going to see us get into some of that, and that's one of the areas the money will be 
utilized as well. And about the trust, if you have some uh, uh, views. About the, like I said, right now our focus is two wheeler and three wheeler. Uh, if anything changes, we'll talk about it at the right time. And sir, uh, uh, this, we have a two and a half, two lakh fifty thousand kind of a uh, uh, manufacturing capacity which is almost ready and built up. You feel that in 22-23 we could, uh, you know, fulfill that uh, target? So again, like I said, I think uh, uh, April and May when I look at the numbers, uh, interesting trend. I think the volume numbers are shown in the charts. I think we are seeing the demand. Uh, we're just watching the supply chain and how to manage the supply chain. But uh, yes, we, the things within our control, manufacturing capacity, talent, production, products, I think we got all of that under control. The things we don't control, global supply chain, is the only one that I'm not going to be able to answer directly your question. That will be the determination for whether we get into 20,000 a month or not, right? So, but stay tuned. I think as we go through these calls every quarter, every uh, we will be updating you from time to time. You mean there is a fair chance that we may be able to reach it, or at least we may be able to reach a 20,000 run rate in, in four to five months of good day. Well, like I said, we have done everything within our control to be ready for that opportunity, right? Let the supply chain thing pan out, and then we will determine what the final numbers are. But anything within our control, we are already ready. And what is your sense sir, that the, uh, the electric scooters coming up could, could actually expand this two crore two wheeler market also because it's even if, so far we are giving, we are only talking of replacing the two wheelers, but it could actually you know expand it to uh, people who cannot afford the petrol or the diesel, you know? No, no, I think uh, absolutely. I think that's a good point because when you look at it, the market will expand both at the higher end uh, or the and at the lower end and the reason i say that is india is a relatively a young country there are a lot of people lots and lots and lots of people who turn 18 every month right and uh, they need affordable mobility solutions right so i think that's the beauty of kind of our vision our strategy where we are in that two wheeler at the lower end we are in the two wheeler at the medium to uh, value plus range right and over a period of time we are also obviously going into additional new products plus we are into the three wheeler right at the very low end and at the medium end so when you look at it right i think we play in the belly of the market and the market will itself when you look at it will expand will expand and keep in mind there'll be the b2c customer and the b2b customer with distinctive needs so yes we do expect expect the market to expand over a period of time uh, may i thank you for answering my question so well thank you Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nagesh Basan Hali for closing comments. Uh, thank you all for joining us on the call. Thank you for your time and attention and your interest. We at Greaves Electric Mobility continue to keep working, to continue to keep adding shareholder value, and the, this announcement is one of the series of several initiatives over the last 18 months. So thank you for your interest. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of Graves Cotton Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.